How do you feel? How do you genuinely, honestly feel? <laughs> right? <laughs> Ask a teacher that question, and the answer could be absolutely terrifying. As human beings, we have become pretty shocking at taking care of ourselves. But as teachers, we have reached a whole other level of neglect. <laughs> a third of teachers quit the profession within the first five years of qualifying. On top of that, one in 83 last year were signed off on long-term sick due to pressures of work, stress, anxiety. That's 3,750 human beings. You may know one of them. Friends, colleagues, family. We have reached an epidemic of stress in our schools, and it is a reality that needs facing. But what if we could, as individuals, take little steps to start to place the same emphasis on staff well-being as we do for the mental health of the children that we teach. What would that look like? How would that feel? So everyone has a story of how they've struggled, and I'm no different, and wow, was I struggling. So a couple of years ago, I bumped into my old primary school PE teacher, randomly at a museum with my two young girls, and as they toasted some bread, he asked me how I was doing and how being a teacher was. <gasps> and in that moment, I decided to be completely honest, both with him and with myself. And I told him of how much I was struggling, how life had just become too much, and I didn't know if I wanted to be a teacher anymore. I didn't know if I could be a teacher anymore. Uh, and then I listened to him, and I absorbed how difficult he had found the role, not just back when I knew him, all those years ago, but in the years that followed, and actually throughout his whole career. And I wasn't alone. I realized other people felt the same way that I was feeling. Because the reality was that 30 years, ooh, on from those days with him in PE, I was the broken one. I was the one struggling to simply cope, let alone stand up and teach outstanding lessons every day. <laughs> and two weeks after that seemingly random catch up with that old school teacher of mine, I was signed off work sick and in danger of becoming one of those 3,750 teachers that stay signed off. And I made a choice. And my choice was to survive. So I have always loved yoga. <laughs> I loved yoga so much that I signed up for a yoga teacher training course with the best teachers at the most amazing, beautiful, wonderful studio, but I wasn't going to do it. I was going to cancel my place because life had just become too overwhelming. But the universe, which already I know sounds a little bit yoga-like, so I knew I was on the right track, <laughs> lined things up a little bit for me and made it just a little bit easier for me to say yes to say yes to that cause and yes to myself. And never have I been more thankful of the timing of this yoga teacher training starting because it taught me everything I needed to know to start to put my pieces of myself back together. If nothing changes in our scores, and emphasis isn't placed on staff well-being, then the extraordinary human beings that teach the, or have the mind-blowing task of teaching the next generation of extraordinary human beings will lose their sparkle. And their drive, their determination, their passion will go. You 
are so important. You are so significant. Yes, a change in the way that the education system views staff well-being would be wonderful. Life-changing, teacher-saving. But what can we do as individuals to begin to collectively move mountains? It is so simple. Take care of yourself. That's it. If we can commit to taking care of ourselves, if we can start to change our perspective about this thing called work-life balance, support each other along the way, then a change can happen. We have stopped listening to ourselves. We are starting to become disconnected and separated from our lives. How often have you wished your day away, your week, your school term, just to get to the evening, the weekend, the next half term, just to breathe. That right there is how we are becoming disconnected and separated from our lives. But you can change and improve your life. You can increase your happiness levels and your connections with the world around you and those people in it. I know you can. Because knowing this to be true is what saved me. Saved me from staying broken. Saved me from quitting a job that I actually loved. Saved me from separating myself from my own children, my family, my friends. So I said it was simple, but how do we even begin to take care of ourselves? Grab a notebook, start a journal. Tell yourself that you are enough, and do that every single day. Drink enough water, exercise. Practice mindfulness, which is just meditation, which is just sitting still, quietly, for a few minutes. <laughs> Try yoga. Get curious about your relationship with your phone and social media. Practice random acts of kindness. Ask for support and begin to connect with who you truly are. Why? Why bother? Why bother doing all these things? Because you are exquisite. And there is no one else like you. And if you doubt your significance, if you don't believe that you're important in this grand scheme of things. Stop. Stop right there in that moment, in that thought. And remember this. Your light is the most important thing in your life that needs protecting. So guard it. Shield it. Fuel it. And defend it with your life. Because then you can be the light in someone else's life. Thank you. <laughs>